Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Ken Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And with the US Open only a week away, we have some big, big changes to the rankings, and everything is set now for the US Open after what we just saw in Cincinnati. Let's go have a look at the results, though, because we had two random champions at two of the biggest events of the season. So only two events last week in Cincinnati, and we had two unseeded players in the final. Kvitova takes on Garcia, and Garcia, the qualifier, ended up winning 6-2, 6-4, and both got a big boost in the rankings. And on the men's side, we also had an unseeded champion with Borna Choric beating Stefano Tsitsipas 7-6, 6-2, and he had a protected ranking outside of the top 100 as well. So, so some big upsets in Cincinnati. Let's start with the WTA rankings for this week. No massive changes with a lot of upsets happening last week. Sviantek, she stays on top with Contivate coming in at number two. Zachary at three. Bedosa at four. And those four players will be the top four seeds at the US Open next week. Jabir, she comes in at number five. We have a bit of a change in the middle with Arena Sabalenka going up to number six, pushing Halep down to number seven after Sabalenka made the semifinals of Cincinnati and Halep didn't play. Bagula, she stays at number eight with Muguruza at nine. And Derek Hazakina stays at number 10. And she is also playing this week, so her ranking might go up, but that top 10 are the top 10 seeds at the US Open. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and Igor Svantec still the only person to qualify, but that might change over the US Open. Jabir stays in at number two, with Pagula at three, Halep at four, Coco Gop at five, Kazakina at six, Zachary at seven, Bedosa stays in number eight, but we have a change down the bottom, with Garcia going up 13 spots to number nine after winning a lot of points last week, and Sabalenka goes up three spots into that number 10 spot, with Bencic and Kudamatova both being pushed out of the top 10 altogether, so... No changes to the top eight, but expect that to change over the next few weeks because the US Open is worth some serious points. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings over the last week, and it's the two finalists from Cincinnati. Garcia, she's gone up 18 spots to number 17 in the world. And Kvitova, she's gone up seven spots to number 21 in the world. So some big boost for both those ladies after very, very good weeks. Players that have gone down in the rankings outside the top 10. Jill Teichman, she's gone down nine spots to number 30 in the world after losing a bunch of points from last year's final. And Angelique Kerber, she's gone down 21 spots to number 53 in the world after losing a bunch of points that she won at Cincinnati last year. So interesting to see how Kerber plays over the next few weeks because she does have points at the US Open as well and her ranking keeps dropping. Having a look at the ATP rankings this week and some interesting changes to the top 10. Medvedev stays at number one with Zverev coming in at two. Rafa will be at three and Alcaraz at four. And if Zverev does play the US Open, those with the top four seeds going into New York. City Pass, he's gone up two spots to number five, pushing Casper Ruud down to number seven. And if Zverev was to pull out, that would mean that City Pass would be the number four seed. So a very good week making the final City Pass of Cincinnati has really helped his chances of getting the top four seed. Djokovic stays in the middle of those two at number six, just ahead of Root at seven. And Ojele Asim, he's gone up one spot to number eight in the world, a career high for him. Nori, he's gone up two spots to number nine, which is a career high for him. So both those guys having good weeks, making quarterfinal and semifinal in Cincinnati. And Rublev has been pushed out of the top 10 completely because he couldn't back up the final that he made in Cincinnati last year, going down three spots out of the top 10. So those guys got a boost in the rankings. And Hubie Hercatch, he stays at number 10 after a poor week in Cincinnati, but had a lot of points from the previous week in Canada. So he stays at number 10. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and we have one person officially qualified on points. Rafa Nadal, he is now officially in the finals of the ATP in Turin. He didn't play last year because of injury, so he is officially in the ATP finals. Stefano City Pass. He takes over Alcaraz to go to number two, pushing Alcaraz down to number three. Those guys are very close to qualifying. If they have good runs at the US Open, expect them to also qualify with Rafa. Ruud stays at number four this week with Medvedev at five. But Ojele Asim, he leapfrogs Zverev to take the number six spot, pushing Zverev down to number seven, of course. We haven't seen Zverev for such a long time, and we're unlikely to see him at the US Open. So I don't know how much longer Zverev is going to be in the top eight, especially with those points coming up in New York. Rublev stays at number eight for now with her catch at number nine, and Taylor Fritz, he stays at number 10 for the race to Turin this week. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, and Borna Choric, he's gone up 123 spots into the top 30 after winning in Cincy. A thousand extra points, so he rockets up the rankings, and he is now seeded at the US Open, so very, very good week, and now he's going to be seeded after one week. And Rindenik has actually gone up six spots as well. Now, he didn't actually play last week in Cincinnati, but he made it to the final 
of a challenger event in Vancouver. So it just goes to show that even if you don't play the big tournaments, you can still get a boost in the rankings. He's at number 58 in the world after making the final in a challenger event in Vancouver. So all points matter on the ATP. Having a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings this week outside the top 10, we had Sinego going down seven spots to number 63 in the world after he had a very good tournament last year in Cincinnati and couldn't replicate that, so he lost a lot of points. And Benoit Pair, he drops down 54 spots to number 164 in the world after he lost all the points that he made in Cincinnati last year by making the quarterfinals. So a couple of guys that did well last year dropping down the rankings and Benoit Pair is now out of qualification for the US Open. He might have to play the qualies just to be in the main draw. So there you have it. They are the rankings for this week and it's now locked into the US Open. No changes. There's players playing this week, though, so there might be changes in the rankings, but the seedings are set for the next big tournament. Let me know down in the comments below. What are you most shocked about in the rankings? And remember, we don't know if Djokovic is playing the US Open yet, but if he does not play the US Open, if Medvedev doesn't do well, then after the US Open, we could have a new world number one. Rafa is the most likely candidate, but who knows? I mean, there's some crazy things happening this year in the rankings, both the men and the women's rankings, so... We'll find out after the US Open what actually happens with the rankings, but let me know down in the comments below what's the biggest shock for you on the rankings this week.